But now it is time for our top five segment. And we teased it this past week about what it was going to be. And it is top five best summer movies of all time. Man, oh man. Now, I only wanted to approach it from my lifetime. That's for (laughs) sure. And the times that I started going to the movies. And I feel like most recently, this one, I mean, nobody was expecting the numbers that it did. That's for sure. Did Barbenheimer have something to do with it? Maybe. Yes, it did. Let's be honest. It did. (laughs) It did. 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 But, I mean, number five for me is Oppenheimer. I mean, we've talked about this movie so much, and the aspects of filmmaking is just brilliant. Christopher Nolan. Oh, my God. Let me not just, like... Okay. Anyway, um, I just, I just, you know, it's it's such an amazing (laughs) thing that I feel like it had people believe in film again. And I feel like, you know... You can be a filmmaker, be a story-driven film, and also generate beautiful numbers at the box office. And that's what this film proved. So number five for me, Oppenheimer. Well, I love it. I can't argue that pick at all. And of course it had to be on this list because, like I said, it's, I think it might now be the greatest film of all time made. Yeah. And I, so it had to be on a list. Uh, my number five, can you talk about the greatest summer movies of all time without talking about some summer loving? It happened so fast. <laughs> I'm talking, of course, about Grease, the ultimate summer movie where they fell in love during the summer and then had to go back to school and pretend that they were two totally different people. Oh, uh, I, I just, I yeah, come on. I, I think this was just a brilliant movie. You can't go run. The soundtrack was epic. Talking about the bad guy who's really in heart a good guy. And, he, and just... Uh, I just love this movie. Anybody who doesn't love this movie, what's wrong with you? I just, I, I'm just going to leave it at that. If you haven't seen, stay away from Grease too. I love Michelle Pfeiffer, but stay the fuck away from Grease too. <laughs> <laughs> Worst summer movie of all time, <laughs> but one of the best. My number five, Grease. Check it out if you've never seen it. It's, it's, it's worth it. Trust me. So funny, man. So funny. Number four for me goes to the original Avengers film. I remember this vividly. It was like my freshman year in high school. Not to age myself for that. <laughs> um, but it was like my freshman year in high school. And literally we were about to get out of school and everybody was talking about this film. Whether it be they're going to go see it or the aftermath of just watching it and how it was completely revolutionary to bring all of these freaking people in on one set and bring them to this film. It felt like everybody had their own piece that they brought to it. So I felt like that was very special. And what it did was bring a community of people who aren't necessarily comic book people or who weren't really into superhero movies before to a place where they were very intrigued and some people like started watching marvel movies because of the first avengers so it's very interesting it's very intriguing and it's honestly one of my favorites of all time you can go back and watch our marvel ranked video and see where i ranked that on our youtube page but yes i love this film we watch it all the time on repeat so number four for me the original avengers movie yes yes i I mean i can't argue with anything you just said there one of the greatest movies ever and uh, absolutely changed the game of cinema i mean it 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 just did Uh, now i'm gonna get very creative because i'm gonna link your number four with my number four how am i gonna do that My number four starred Jennifer Grey, who for a very long time was married to Agent Coulson himself. (laughs) So they did sadly just recently announce that they were no longer together. They had, uh, they're getting a divorce, but they are friendly. It was amicable. They're like, you know, so sadly, but there's my connection for any trivia out there. You you didn't know Jennifer Grey was indeed married to him. Uh, My number four is Dirty Dancing. Again, another ultimate summer movie um that in all honesty in the 80s became if the breakfast club was a rite of passage for just teenagers in general dirty dancing was a rite of passage for females if you it's like if you didn't watch it you weren't ready to be a a woman (laughs) it's just legitimately women flocked to this thing just in just unbelievable numbers like this was like i i can't tell you 
how people freaked out. And if you drove by any pool or any beach or any lake in anywhere in the country during the time this movie was out, you saw somebody hoisting their woman up above them. <laughs> and there was no – everybody was – doing. I we can do that. We can do that. Like it was everywhere. It was everywhere. Um, yeah, I just – if you don't know what I'm talking about, what? What? Uh, go watch Dirty Dancing. You will be happy that you did. It's very fun. It's very, it's very, God, you know, rest in peace, Patrick Swayze, one of his best roles ever, no doubt about it. And, um, yeah, just dirty dancing. I don't even know what else to say about it. Just, I hoisted several of them up in the wall. I just, I'm not even going to lie. Several of them. Uh, they were all like, can you do me? Do me. I'm like, all right. It's just, you know, the 80s. <laughs> goofy as shit. Goofy as shit. You know, some weird awesome. Awesome. Um, anyway, <laughs> my number three goes to a more recent one, which is Elvis. I feel like the anticipation around this film was absolutely insane from younger audiences and older audiences. And that was the beauty of this film that came out a couple of years ago. Mm. I feel like it connected a lot of older and younger audiences because in a world that is so divided whether that be political or generational or what have you social media esque it is something that i feel like everybody was talking about i mean austin butler definitely embodied elvis no he doubt he came elvis which i loved it i mean it was very polarizing people some people didn't like it some people did um but i i really enjoyed it and i learned a lot about the king of rock and roll and i am also very proud of austin butler who took tom hanks's advice who said be sure to stay busy after this role because i mean it's been nothing but success for that man and he's kind of lost the elvis accent it so took him a good. while but it, yeah <laughs> it took him a while it took him a while but i mean it's it's awesome to see because all of the things that he's been in have been great oh yeah i mean freaking dune uh masters of the air oh, and yeah, a couple yeah. of others we're about to have the bike riders but it's really good to see that this man is here to stay um but yeah I, elvis it was definitely a conversation starter that i feel like you know a lot of people learned a lot about so no number doubt. three for me elvis no doubt no doubt uh my number three uh, and and I, I this again is one of I consider one of the greatest films ever made. The, I I absolutely love this film. Agreed. Uh, I'm talking about Stand by Me. So mm. if the uh, it's a group of boy friends that are that are on the hunt for uh, a dead body, and 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 it's it's just all about growing up, and it's about different classes of kids you know some middle class and then kids who aren't so lucky they're struggling dad's an addict and beating them and 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 you, you know one's just trying to escape knowing that he'll probably never escape the town because he's going to be stuck there just because that's who he is and how somehow the, all these kids are like best friends and while they're trying to hunt down the body they got the older brothers trying to also find the body and and you keep for sutherland oh my gosh so just but um, River Phoenix and Will Wheaton and Jerry O'Connell, and I just this is an amazing film about friendship. It, it really what it comes down to is an amazing film about friendship and with the lengths that you will go for your best friend. Um, and and it's just it's one of those if you haven't watched it, it it's very dialogue driven. It's almost narrated. You know, Richard Dreyfus narrates it through a sense or whatever, but um. Yeah, just an unbelievable movie, and at times, some hard, sometimes hard to watch. It gets a little emotional, um, but totally worth it. Totally worth it to watch it, and I think, uh, yeah, it sticks with me every time it's on. I stop and watch it. Like if I'm flipping and I see it, I'm like, oh no, I'm gonna finish watching this. Doesn't matter where it's at in the movie. I'm like, no, I'm gonna finish watching this. It's like it's that good. So if you guys haven't seen it, check it out. Stand by me. Yeah, I mean, it's one of those, yeah, it's so good. It's like almost a perfect film. Oh. Like it's, It falls in one of those categories. It, it just, really does. Every time they're on the railroad tracks and like, oh, sh oh shit, train. Yeah, <laughs> you know, exactly. It's just, so I, I mean, yeah, man, yeah. So good, so good. Number two for me goes to Black Widow. Now, I feel like I picked this film specifically because we were all – ready to get back to the theater mm. and the crazy thing is i mean i remember it being around 
COVID time and the bubble was happening for the NBA finals and the NBA playoffs. And they got to watch it before we got to watch yeah, it. I was kind yeah. of pissed, but yeah, it was, was like, whatever, that's fine. But when we finally were able to watch it, it was like, it was almost like breathing fresh air again um, to be able to be back in the theater. Um, it was a beautiful thing because you really see who the Marvel fans are. The Marvel fans, yes, can be a lot. I'm not going to lie. We can be a lot, um, <laughs> especially those who have X and Twitter and social media at the thumb of their hands. But, I mean, I feel like no matter what, they're bitching and complaining. Yeah. But they're yeah. going to that movie. Oh. They're going to that theater every, every time. single time. Every time. So, I mean, it's one of those things where even during a worldwide pandemic, we still, when the movie theaters opened back up, we went and saw Black Widow. So it was something that I, it's monumental and historic, in my opinion, because it. For me and for us, uh, it was the first film we went back to the theater to yep. after something like this had happened. Yep. Um, so that's why I put it on my list. Number two for me, Black Widow. There you go. My number two, um, it's on my list because 4th of July, do you get more summer than the 4th of July? I don't think so. And uh, it's, for me, one of the greatest cinematic speeches of all time. Yeah. Uh, hands down. When the president gives the speech... That today they're fighting for the world's Independence Day. I, it's just it's so powerful. And of course, I'm talking about Independence Day when the aliens come and the whole world has to get together to, to stand ground and get rid of these motherfuckers and save the earth. Uh, and of course, led by the United States because we're the badass motherfuckers. Um, look, I think this movie it's it's pretty much and and maybe some people will argue but I, I I just think it true the height of Will Smith's popularity at that point like massive when he's at his biggest largest he can't do anything wrong kind of a thing he's this is it and uh, Harry Connick Jr and just like there's so many great little May Whitman little tiny May Whitman's in this one uh, just so many phenomenal people in this film but I I just I loved it because you know, there's all. It seems like there's always something going on in the world where there's tension and there's wars. And this was a movie where, is he said, you know what? When it comes down to it, we're all just human beings. We're all just fighting to survive. And why are we enemies? We can unite. And this this movie shows that with just some patience and a little communication. We're all just living the same life. We're all just trying to make it in this world. And we're better together and stronger together than we are separate. And I think that was the message that this film really tried to send. And, and uh, you know, let's unite. Just have a peaceful world. And if some alien motherfuckers come, we got this shit. <laughs> like, that's what I mean, basically. But, I mean, come on. The visuals in this thing, when you're seeing the fucking White House blow up and, the, and just, uh, it's just over the top, crazy. And Jeff Goldblum. Enough yeah. said. Jeff Goldblum flying with Will Smith into outer space is worth watching it right there. So just, yeah. My number two, Independence Day. It's one of the, it's timeless. Like, it is. So it is. Good. It's just so good. It's uh, And I watch so it every 4th of July. I'm not even going to lie. If it's the 4th of July, I put that fucking movie on. Because I have to hear that oh, yeah. speech every 4th of July. Man. It's, it's like, so good. It's it so is. Good. Well, number one for me, I feel like this film was, honestly, when I was a kid, I felt like this franchise was the biggest thing after Star Wars that had ever happened. Hmm. Um, because it, I think it cultivated a lot of different communities to where it wasn't necessarily like the raunchiest thing. It was obviously geared towards kids, but it was a good family film that adults find entertaining and still do. Of course, they went off the deep end with a little too many sequels and possibly bringing it back. But I'm talking about Pirates of the Caribbean. The first one, I think they did a phenomenal job, man. I mean, obviously, Johnny Depp. This is the height of Johnny Depp. You're oh, without doubt. Will Smith, yeah. But this is the height of Johnny Depp. And Orlando Bloom. I mean, you could argue to say that was the height of him as well. Um, and 
Kira Knightley and like everybody who was in this film just gelled so well together. And I mean, it's kind of like mafia. People have the same obsession with mobsters that they kind of do with pirates. I mean, mm. people always kind of get the vague understanding of the underworld, either in the cities or in the sea and yeah. all of these different things. And even to where I remember being... Um, how old was I? I don't. I think I was like in first grade or something like Shut that. Shut the and, fuck up, bro. <laughs> Shut up. Like first grade, <laughs> and I, I went home. It was like when I grow up, I'm gonna be a freaking pirate. And like it was one of those things where like it was. I mean, I also think the first one is timeless as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, I think it's one of those that it defines cinema as well uh, to try to cultivate a audience that both the children and adults would like um, yeah so yeah number one for me pirates of the caribbean i think first grade's probably right because your wife I, was still a baby like a baby baby yeah. so i think i think yeah. you're you're about right with the, like when that was um and i'm sure if not uh jason will call us out on the year <laughs> yeah always <laughs> always okay for my number one i only need to say one thing we're gonna need a bigger boat Right away, you know what I'm talking about. You don't even have to go anywhere else. This had to be on the list, and it had to be number one, because without this film, there is no such thing as the greatest summer films of all time, because it is the godfather of the first, the OG, summer blockbuster, Jaws. Without Jaws, summer blockbusters, summer movies, they don't exist. There's no such thing. This was the first tentpole, the first big daddy that was considered a summer blockbuster. The one now everybody chases, Jaws, Steven Spielberg. Um, I don't even have to talk much about this one. You know what Jaws is. You know what it did for cinema. You know what it did for Steven Spielberg. And uh, the rest is history. <laughs> I mean, if you enjoy summer blockbusters, thank you, Steven Spielberg. And that giant fucking shark, because that's why you have them. <laughs> and if you want to see that, go to the Academy Museum, because he's hanging. The Jaws is hanging there. Go check that out. It's badass. Um, but yeah, my number one Jaws, man. Got to do it. So fun. So fun. Well, we want to know, what is your favorite summer movie of all time? Be sure to comment below in the YouTube comment section or add us on Threads X. Anywhere, man. Anywhere. We love the fan interaction. Anywhere. We want to talk to you about different things. It's always so fun. It's always so fun. We're here to build a community. That's for sure. <laughs>